Hello everybody and welcome to Live with Gretchen Heidel. It's our Monday night date on uh, May 3rd. Monday night, May 3rd. We're in May already, 2021. So welcome. If you are just joining, I am a full-time astrologer, life coach, Reiki master, and so much more. And I am live every Monday night on Facebook and on Instagram. Or you might be watching the pre-recorded version, and in which case I'm um, also on YouTube as well. So make sure that you join. Um, like and share, like and share, and go ahead and post your astrological sign. I love hearing uh, where you guys are tuning in from and also your astrological sign. So we got Rita from uh, Colorado, Virgo. She's also my mom, <laughs> so welcome. Uh, Corbin, howdy, still a Scorpio, believe it or not, he said. Uh, and I think he's in Georgia. Uh, hello, uh, Joanne on Instagram. Welcome. Yes, it's May already. I can't believe it. Uh, we are still in Taurus season, uh, but man, we're we're zipping through. These planets are moving ahead, um, and it's kind of crazy. So Lee, Virgo, and Burlington, Vermont. Uh, Colette, Capricorn, Sun, Cancer, Rising in Vermont. Hello, Astro friend. She said, "Welcome." I love how everybody's forming a wonderful community here. Um, Andre. I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure. Leo from Cherry Hill. I'm originally from Collingswood, New Jersey, um, Andre. So right in your backyard. <laughs> Marianne, always happy to be here. Aries from Vermont. Welcome. Um, so if you're joining uh, live tonight on uh, one of these, we're going to be talking about lots of good stuff. And we're like almost prematurely in a weird way moving into Gemini season, like lickety split. It feels like Taurus season just started, but some of the planets are moving ahead. Um, uh, Iris, uh, Aries of Vermont, hello. Um, oh, Andre, you're Chris's friend. That's right. That's right. Duh. <laughs> Yes, Gino's boyfriend. Yes, welcome, uh, Andre. And um, yes, we have a bunch of people on, on Instagram also joining. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. I didn't uh, recognize your last name there. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So today was a, I will say actually the last two days have been like crazy. If you guys saw any of my posts, it's like each post is this long. I have trouble fitting it all into um, Instagram's uh, restrictions. Uh, they restrict me on word count. Um, I think it's like 2,000 two thousand characters or something. Anyway, um, I can't fit it all in because it's just been so, so, so jam-packed full of stuff. So just today, I won't spend too long on today because, hello, we're almost done with today. But I do want to talk about the last two days just because it was just so much. So we had... Mercury formed a trine with Pluto on Sunday. Venus formed a sextile with Neptune. Then today, Mercury formed a square with Jupiter. And then uh, the Sun formed a square with Saturn. Woo! Lots of energy. Um, and then Mercury moved into the sign of Gemini, or is moving into the sign of Gemini tonight, right after the forecast at 10.49 p.m. Eastern Time. So after after I sign off, uh, right after Gemini, uh, Mercury is moving into Gemini. Now, why this is important is because we are going to be in a really extended stay in the sign of Gemini, uh, Mercury and Gemini. So basically what's happening is, uh, usually Mercury is in each sign for like two, three weeks at a time. Well, it's going to be in Gemini all the way until July um, 11th so of 2021. So between now, today, and July 11th, uh, we're going to be in Mercury and Gemini. And that's a super Mercury on steroids. I'm just saying it's going to be a lot. Jean Moonwolf said, love to you from the over the limit Taurus. <laughs> Jackie Pitch it, uh, said Virgo, Vermont. We have a lot of Virgos on tonight. Capricorn, Kirsten in, in Vermont. Oh, yay. Andrea, Aries from Vermont. Uh, we have a lot of, we have a lot of uh, Virgos, it seems, uh, on, on the broadcast watching live. But so anyway, so when we get into, uh, we have a lot of energy on this Mercury, Gemini stuff. Um, so the home... Remember, two plant, two signs share Mercury as their ruling planet, and it's it's Gemini and it's Virgo, and so Mercury is at home in the sign of Gemini, but that means it's going to be an extra, extra, extra Mercury in Gemini cycle. Um, this is a lot of talking, communicating, 
you know, all the Gemini stuff, you know, it's friends, it's as far as people, the sign of Gemini in the third house, as far as people go, um, it is siblings, um, it's neighbors, like your little neighborhood, um, it's your little community, um, and uh, it is cousins, siblings and cousins. Um, so, you know, it, but it's also student, being a student and learning. Gemini is a lot of like stuff with teaching, teaching, learning, you know, uh, kind of expanding your intellect, expanding your mind. It is an air sign and this year Mercury is going to go retrograde, uh, in all of the air signs. So Mercury is always retrograde for three weeks, three times a year. And I won't go into a deep dive of Mercury retrograde just yet because it's not going to go retrograde until May 29th. So the last Saturday of the month of May, it's like Memorial Day weekend, uh, that Mercury is going to go retrograde May 29th at 6.34 p.m. Eastern time. So if you want to mark that on your calendar, okay, Merc that's when Mercury goes retrograde. And it'll be retrograde for three weeks, three, three weeks, three times a year. Um, so... Uh, I don't have it marked here on my calendar, so I have to find it. Um, but we were going to be, we are going to be in that cycle for a while. Um, and, and plus, oh, until the 22nd of June. So if you guys want to mark it on your calendar, um, it's May 29th until June 22nd, Mercury retrograde. So we are kind of in the pre, we're going to get into the pre-shadow time of that Mercury retrograde. Um, but just today, actually just one hour before <laughs> tonight, 10.49 p.m., Mercury will go into Gemini and we will start to see an increase in communication, travel, um, busyness. Now, usually that's a time of like really being like social butterflies, like getting out there. And, you know, I kind of feel like Gemini is, even though it's called the twins, uh, I feel like Gemini is really a butterfly type, type of sign. It's like very, whoo, like, you know, um, uh, you know, can float around and just sort of do its thing. And so it's, that's an air sign quality. So we already had Mercury went into retrograde in Aquarius. And then the third retrograde in the fall will be Mercury in Libra. So we have those three, three retrogrades coming this year. So it's going to be interesting. So we're getting into that precursor that, so it's going to be in a long, so it's good to know where Gemini is in your astrological chart. And I'm also going to be talking about Venus going into Gemini this week as well. So we have two planets going into Gemini already. I feel like I feel like we just entered Taurus season, but we're I guess we're getting a little preemptive uh, Gemini action here. Um, so the planets that means the planets are moving very quickly, and they're moving far ahead of the sun, which means that you know there's an acceleration of learning and growing and all that stuff with Mercury and Venus. So if you think of, I like to think of. I have I have a little Capricorn in my chart, and I'm going to show that to you. <laughs> my Capricorn energy. Um, but I like to think of these as department heads, okay? So when you think of Mercury, you think about communication, it's all the throat chakra. And when you think of Venus, it's love, love, love. So that's like the heart chakra. So when we talk about Mercury, when you think about the throat chakra, it's all about blue. That's the color of that chakra is blue energy, Mercury um, and communicating is all blue. So that basically is what the deal is. Um, uh, you know, so it depends on where it is in your astrological chart. I had uh, some of the, <laughs> I did have some of the charts laying here and unfortunately I moved them and now I don't have a chart to show you like the symbol of Gemini. But if you Google the symbol of Gemini, you can find it on your own astrological chart to see what area uh, Gemini falls in uh, specifically for you. Um, for example, my Gemini is in my 11th house of friendships. Now, funny enough, I have a lot of Gemini friends. Uh, Gemini is a sign that literally, literally, um, I attract people either with their sun in Gemini, their moon in Gemini, something significant, Gemini rising. I've dated a bunch of people that have moon in Gemini or Gemini rising. Um, so it's interesting that, um, <laughs> that 
it, it's quite literal in my chart, uh, that 11th house. Plus, I'm an Aries, and I get along really well with air signs. Fire signs and air signs get along really well. So if you are already an air sign, you will definitely feel this. So again, uh, Gemini... Um, uh, Libra and then Aquarius are all the air signs. So you'll be you'll be feeling this picking up of this air energy and it'll make you even more uh, talkative and wanting to share ideas all at one time. I mean, that's like a quickening and the speeding up of that uh, Gemini energy. If you are a fire sign, so Aries, Leo or Sagittarius, you will be feeling more fired up with this additional air energy. Um, now we can't forget, we still have the sun is in Taurus. We still have, excuse me, Uranus in Taurus and we still have, you know, so, uh, Lilith in Taurus. So we have planets in Taurus as well. Uh, it's not like we're totally done with Taurus season cause you know, that's not the case. It's just that we have some of these other planets skipping ahead. They're moving really fast now and they gained up a lot of speed and a momentum. So they're, they're, uh, they're jogging ahead of, <laughs> down the road. So we're getting, we're getting, a uh, just, we only had like a, like, I would say like two weeks of really intensive earth energy. Now it's kind of switching into some air. So earth energy is much more practical and that air energy wants to move, wants to be fast and quick. Um, so that's going to happen tonight. Like I said, Mercury is going to be in Gemini all the way until July 11th. So we'll have that to look forward to. Um, that definitely increases flirtatiousness. It increases, um, it does increase being scattered and ungrounded. So I wrote in my post today, like make sure you focus on grounding yourself because with all this air energy, it's almost like having a helium balloon that's not tethered, you know? I mean, like it's like whoop, like we just want to float up. Um, so when we talk about the brain function, that's mercury, and we talk about the vocalization and the expression of, of words and of you know speaking and talking that's mercury so like i said the blue the blue um i'm wearing my lapis uh to one of my bracelets is lapis the rest are the hematite that i always wear but i have the lapis how light i talked a lot about how light if you are gemini or if you have a lot of gemini in your chart uh gemini moon gemini rising gemini venus okay if you have a lot of Gemini in your chart, you should get a chunk of Howlite for yourself because it is so, oh, I love this. It's so soothing because it helps to be not as scattered, you know? I mean, that Gemini energy can feel very nervous, very flitty, flighty a little bit, a little bit um, kind of ADD, not to, not to use that as, you know, I know that that's a thing, but... A lot of Geminis I know literally have ADD. Like, you know, it's just like that nervousness and that kind of um, lack of focus. Uh, Soda Light is another good blue one. I use this for for um, the third chakra. I think Soda Light is a really good indigo color, but it's still blue. So you could wear um, blue lace agate. You could, um, you could, uh, uh, I'm thinking uh, turquoise. Uh, how, like I said, the dyed blue howlite. This is dyed. Um, it's usually white. Um, any of those beautiful blue stones, uh, celestite, I believe, is a, another good one. Any of those blue stones, aquamarine, my own birthstone. How could I forget? I, I'm not wearing those tonight, but I I have uh, aquamarine um, earrings and lots of aquamarine jewelry. So. By the way, I didn't know this, but I learned recently that aquamarine has become the new wedding uh, ring. Instead of a diamond, a lot of people are getting aquamarines, which I didn't, I, I just learned that recently. It's a, like a new uh, new thing. So if you're liking this program, remember to like and share, like and share with your friends because that's what helps the algorithm um, and uh, people get to know that. Um, so we got a lot of people joining on Instagram. Hello, everyone. Stars 10, Harold, uh, Jenny, all, a whole bunch of people are, are joining. So welcome. And if you're on Facebook, welcome. Uh, <laughs> Gloria said, hi, Gretchen. Pug hugs. She She's a uh, rescuer of pugs as well. 
Uh, Andrea said Gemini rising. So yes, yeah, so your Gemini starts in the twelfth house, um, Andrea. So that will be that will be your twelfth house cycle. Um, and I happen to know that you also have the Moon in Gemini and Venus already in Gemini. So you're gonna have your Venus return during this uh, whole thing. Um, and by the way, all the planets, by the way, um, have a return at some point. Every year we celebrate a very important return like our birthday. That's our solar return where the where the sun comes back to its original spot when you were born. That's what we celebrate. But we have the Saturn return, but then we have Venus return, Jupiter return, Mars return. And that just means that you're going to Venus on Venus. Okay, that's love on love. That's a that's a nice fun return. I like the Venus return. Kristen said, "Hey, uh Sagittarius from South Burlington, welcome." Um so so there was a lot of energy in this last 48, 72 hours, and even from last week it was a lot of energy. It was just kind of crazy. So, excuse me, um, you want to, I, I have to, I have a, a thing where I do coaching um, before um, I do these, uh, my, these sessions uh, with you guys, and I have to eat something very quickly <laughs> in between. Um, like I have like five minutes to eat something, and so um, sometimes it sits well and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but anyway, that's basically what's going to be happening uh, this week. So, so on Monday there was a lot, and then today on Monday also was the last quarter lunar cycle. Now that can mean that today specifically, uh, there was something that we had to kind of reevaluate. We had to kind of, um, uh, you know, we might have been at a crossroads with something because it's a when whenever we have our quarter moon cycles, which is basically a half of a moon. Um, so if you look in the sky tonight, the moon is literally half. Uh, on the right is dark and on the left is the is the half uh it was in 13 degrees aquarius today and whenever the whenever the half moon comes along so we had we're having one today on, on may 3rd and then we have another one coming on may 19th and um, that's going to be 29 degrees leo in that one that basically is a continuation from either the full moon or the new moon. Now, the one today was the continuation from the full moon. That's why I call it the second chance full moon. So we're continuing on our journey of releasing things from that full moon. We have that full moon, that big, powerful full moon in Scorpio. A fixed sign is Scorpio. Now, today, we had it in the fixed sign of Aquarius. 13 degrees Aquarius. So if you are a fixed sign, so if you're an Aquarius or a Leo, you probably felt this right because that was you were ground zero in in that. And uh, uh, you know, and if you're if you're uh, the other fixed sign, Taurus and Scorpio, that's the same you know kind of vibe. So you guys might have been feeling this even more today than normal, uh, but definitely it's something that uh, will get uh, you know it's it's a, it's a time of reevaluation. Um, and whenever they sort of basically what so okay you know how the new moon it's the sun and the moon and then the full moon is the sun and the moon are opposite during the half moons it's when the sun is square the moon so it's a contentiousness the square is a contentiousness so the sun is in taurus the moon is in aquarius that's weird energy those two don't normally like kind of hang out unless if you have a lot of you know, one or the other in, you know, if it's a Taurus with like a lot of air signs in their chart or a, or an Aquarius with a lot of earth signs, they're, they're not two signs that normally would get along very well. Um, but yet today that's what happened. You know, the sun was in Taurus and the moon was in Aquarius and we had the half moon. So we are continuing on that energy. So we had to release something, let something go. We're still letting things go from that big full moon and we'll continue to let go, let go, let go all the way until the new moon and that's coming next week on may 11th and that's going to be the new moon in taurus 21 degrees taurus so write that on your calendar it's 3 p.m in the afternoon eastern time so 12 noon if you live out on the west coast and that'll be a good chance to manifest something positive uh with the new moon in taurus um but today we had to think outside the box. So remember when I said that those two were not really on the same page, Taurus is all about like sort of more traditional, more tried and true and, um, and you know, building on solid ground. 
Aquarius is like, screw that. Let's try something new, different. Like, I don't want to do tried and true. I want to do new, different, unique, you know, individualized and all that. And so these two are very different signs. Like I said, Aqu Aquarius and Taurus is in life wouldn't naturally be friends unless if they each had some, you know, additional thing that would maybe make them match together. But otherwise, on normal circumstances, Tauruses and, and Aquariuses um, are just are so different. They're just very different. Uh, let's see. John Schmitz said, uh, super emotional today. Yeah, I mean, today had a lot of elements to it. So as we move through the week, as we kind of go away from this, we have uh, Wednesday is Cinco de Mayo. So happy Cinco de Mayo to everyone that celebrates that. Um, but as we get into Thursday, because we're going to have two days kind of, kind of, of it being a little bit more quiet. So we start today, like I said, the moon's in Aquarius. And then tomorrow night at 10 p.m., like 10 or 9 p.m. on the 4th, the moon is going to move into Pisces. So we have Pisces on the 5th, Pisces on the 6th. And then once we get to the 7th in the morning at 7.52 a.m. Eastern Time, we move into Aries. And then for the rest of the weekend, the moon will be in Aries until about almost 7.45 p.m. on Sunday night. Then the moon moves into Taurus. Now, why is that important to know? Well, because the planets kind of, you know, it's not like a shock or a surprise here. The planets uh, sort of denote how we're going to be feeling on those days. You know, the moon is our emotion. The moon is transient. Yes, it's in each sign two and a half days, 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 all the way around. So that's that's almost that's 28 days. The moon cycle is 28 days. Uh, women's female cycle, the menstruation cycle is 28 days. That's why it's called the moon cycle. And so it's good to know uh, where the moon is because often it will influence us. So when the moon is in Pisces, 4th, 5th, and 6th, in, into the 7th in the morning, that's a time of being more emotional, more sensitive, more intuitive, uh, a little sleepy, a little bit like meditative and quieter. Then when the moon moves into Aries on Friday and then getting into the weekend, we're all of a sudden a little louder, a little more boisterous. We're, we're in a fire zone, okay? <laughs> yes, that's Aries energy. We might want to get into a fight or, <laughs> or get into a little combative situation. Aries likes to, likes to uh, get into a fight. So, so there's that. So, I mean, uh, John Schmidt just said, do men have moon cycles? Um, well, as far as in the same way as women no. but men, it has been proven that men do have some version of their own hormonal cycle. Absolutely. Um, and so, uh, there's times when the hormones go up and times when the hormones go down. And so there, they have found that men have some kind of a degree of that. And men always, men have the moon in their chart, just like women do. It's not a, it's not based on the sexes. We all have the moon in our chart because the moon was in the sky the time we were born and it always, always has been and always will hope hopefully. Um, and so, uh, we all have moon signs. So for example, what is your moon sign? So if you know your moon sign and I can tell you, okay, Wednesday, the moon's going to be in Pisces. If your moon's in Pisces, you're going to be feeling extra Pisces. Uh, so it's good to know where your moon is in order to know how you're going to get along. So John just said his moon is in Scorpio. That's a water sign. Scorpio and Pisces are BFFs because they're both water signs. So for John, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday morning, uh, Friday morning, uh, John's going to be feeling in the zone because he's in his element. See how that works? So, so, you know, it just depends on where the moon is in your chart and what sign you are and all the different layers of how you will feel for those days. And it's also good to know, obviously, if you look, uh, so Jackie said her moon is in Libra. So this weekend, Jackie, coming up, uh, you know, uh, when we look at the moon being in Aries, Aries and Libra are opposite of each other. So that might be a little more challenging for you, Jackie, because the moon is opposing your moon. Uh, so it's almost like you have your version of a full moon going on in your astrological chart. Um, and that can be a little bit more, that can be a little bit more of a challenge. Marianne said, yes, you and I have 
moon and Pisces. I do have moon and Pisces. Um, Monica said Virgo. So again, Monica, same thing. The opposite of Virgo is Pisces. So when the moon's in Pisces for you this week, while, while John is having a good time, Monica might be having a challenging time because the moon is going to oppose her moon. So the moon and they don't get, they're not going to be getting along as well. Uh, oh, John, your son's in Pisces too. Wow. So, so you have, you'll have uh, a double bubble there. You'll have the sun in Pisces, moon in Scorpio. That's double water. So you'll be feeling extra watery um, during those Pisces moons. Now, sometimes that can be too much water. That can be too, like a flood situation. <laughs> We have a flood situation going on in Vermont. Um, every state in the United States, and I don't have all of the states in front of me. I don't have it all memorized. Uh, but Vermont is actually a double Pisces, Pisces sun and Pisces moon. So, and we're getting tons of rain and tons of water right now. So we're in a we're in a flood zone. Um, let's see. So, okay, Iris said Cancer moon. Um, and so, Iris, that's the same thing. You have a water moon. So during those those Pisces days, you're going to be in the zone. Uh, my mom has a Cancer moon. I'm sorry, Capricorn moon. Um, and so Capricorn and Pisces are wa earth and water. So that would get along well. But mom, you might have a, a not, I have noticed, I have noticed mom that you don't get, you don't feel, you always tell me you don't feel well when the moon is in Aries. Always. You always send me a text going, I'm tired. I have a headache. I'm out of sorts when the moon is in Aries. So you can learn patterns. That's why I tell people, write down how you feel in each lunar cycle. I tell people to keep track of it for 30 days, but it's even better if you can keep track of it 60 days. And then you can really see a pattern. Each time the moon is in Taurus, I feel this way. Each time the moon's in Gemini, I feel this way. Each time the moon is in, you know, and then you can kind of know how you're going to feel. Uh, so when I write on my post every day, moon is in whatever sign, Leo, uh, you'll know, okay, oh, Leo for me is a challenging moon or Leo for me is a happy moon, whatever, whatever that might be. And it depends on where it falls in your chart and all that kind of stuff. Um, so John happens to know, he said he feels best when the moon's in Sagittarius. See, so he, he knows, uh, and that might be in a really good, uh, place in your chart, um, depends on what house it's in and all that fun stuff. So anyway, I hope that gives you guys a little bit, uh, a little bit of a heads up. I keep talking about this, what the moon is going to be. So it's Aquarius, Pisces, Aries. And then uh, at the end of the weekend, it'll switch into Taurus, and then we'll be in our Monday Net video again. Um, and then we'll be getting ready to gear up to be in the new moon on next Tuesday. So the one, uh, well, there's two, there's two uh, big planetary things this week, but this week for sure astrologically is quieter than last week. Uh, I had a lot of people telling me last week was not fun for them. Um, you know, I did that video last week about cats a lot. I used my example of my cat and and grieving and spirit. And I had so many questions this week about cats and people sending me pictures and videos. And it was pretty cool. But um, this week is quieter. So Tuesday, Wednesday, moon in Pisces, it's going to be relatively quiet. On Thursday, on May 6th, the Venus is going to be forming a trine with Pluto. And then on Saturday, Venus will form a square with Jupiter, okay? So Venus is still currently in Taurus, okay? At least for the final, the final little bit <laughs> um, that we have Venus in Taurus. And then, and then on Saturday night at 10.01 p.m., it switches into Venus, into uh, Gemini. But for, for the two times, we have Venus square Pluto, Venus uh, I'm sorry, Venus trine Pluto, Venus square Jupiter. So what this means, and basically last weekend Mercury did the same thing. So it's good for you to know what happened last weekend uh, or this, you know, yesterday and today to know how this will affect you. But Venus is our love, okay? It's our love zone. It's our sensuality. It's who we're attracted to. It's the romantic bits and pieces, okay? It's all the little dirty, naughty bits, okay? Um, it's not actually sexuality, so I want to make that clear. It's sensuality. It's the candles and the romance and all the stuff, but it's also how we hope to be loved and, and how we express our love as well. 
So Venus forming a trine with Pluto is going to be intense. Even trines, like I've to taught you guys, trines with a naughty planet is can be a little ouchy. So we want to watch because Pluto is for sure a tr uh, like a, a a naughty planet when you when you look at things because it's death, it's rebirth, it's transformation, it's phoenix rising. So yes, this could transform our love life for sure. It could be very transformative. Uh, we could also end up playing counselor with our lover or our partner and wanting to dissect them and wanting to, you know, kind of, but it's also can be very intense. So even though Venus is not, um, you know, it is a lover, but not necessarily uh, super sexual, when we, when we couple it with Pluto, that can definitely turn on the fires. <laughs> for sure. So Pluto is in Capricorn right now and Venus is in the last little bit of Taurus. So they're coming together in the earth element. So if you're a Capricorn or a Taurus, you will feel this for sure. And then on Saturday, so that's going to happen just so that you guys know at 7:25 a.m. Eastern time on Thursday morning the 6th, that's when Pluto is involved. And then on Saturday, Venus will form a square with Jupiter in Aquarius, that's going to be 9.38 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, remember what I just told you about Taurus and Aquarius. These two are very uh, odd bedfellows, for sure. Um, Venus is in Taurus, wants to be like kind of sensual and soft and um, romantic and, and very like home and family a little bit. It's it's similar to a Cancerian vibe, I feel, Taurus. Um, but it's just very... Um, it's very just uh, different. Um, and then you couple it with Jupiter being in, in Aquarius, which is like detachment. Okay, let's be in the friend zone. Aqu Aquarius is about like friendship and being like, you know, avant-garde and very different and unique and, and like experimental. I mean, I know a lot of Aquariuses that are a little bit, um, we'll just say, uh, um, I don't know, experimental in the bedroom, uh, <laughs> have some fetishes or have some different things that they like. They like different things. Okay. So Aquarius is, is very, it's like almost like trying to meet up with a traditionalist and how can we find our common ground? And that's going to be on Saturday. So when we look at our love zone and by the way, it's also finances too. So we have to remember Venus, um, is love, but it's also definitely, uh, uh, about uh, finances and how we make our money. So we want to think outside the box while also having like home roots. Um, it's almost like, um, let, let me use the example of like a situation where someone likes to travel a lot, but also has to have a home base. That's kind of what we're talking about when I talk about these two. So, so it's like we want to experiment, but we don't want to travel too far outside of the 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 zone of what Taurus is comfortable with, you know, like we want to we want to have a, a kind of a happy medium there in the middle. So I don't know if that helps at all. Um, I use I can use the example even in my own life because I have I have Venus and Aquarius myself, and then I have Mars and Capricorn. So Capricorn super traditional, Aquarius is super experimental and avant garde and different. I love to combine styles when I look at, when you look at like how I like to, you know, combine styles. I always mix antiques with modern. I don't know how I get away with it, but somehow I do. <laughs> I love either really modern or really old and kind of nothing in between. It's like this like mixture. Mid-century modern for me is kind of like this happy medium. And it's almost like that's what we want to do. We want to create a happy medium with these two planets somehow, like mix the styles. Um, you know, uh, so it's almost like um, something that's tried and true combined with something that's non-traditional and unique and different. So we want to be able to do that in our in our love life. Okay, that's basically what it, or even with money. So how can you make money? Well, you're gonna have to try something new and different. Uh, but not go outside of what you're comfortable with, I guess is, is what I'm saying. So, so there's that. So that's kind of the energy. We had that already happen yesterday and today. Mercury formed a trine with Pluto and then today formed a square with Jupiter. So we're kind of in the vein of doing this. We did it with our communication and now we're going to do it with our love life and our money. That's fun. <laughs> 
So when we look at then Saturday night, it switches. So we move out of Venus being in Gemini or in uh, Taurus into Venus being into Gemini. So now we're in a very different Venus cycle. Now, why is this important? Remember what I always say is it look, it's like, I think of it as department heads almost like where we're really looking at, um, being able to sort of, in other words, this gives us a flavor for the month. Venus is, it goes into each sign for roughly one month at a time. So we just spent a month with Venus being in Taurus, which is all about comfort food and being under the snuggle blankie and like lighting candles. Remember all that Taurus stuff that I just got done saying, like, it's like, uh, you know, you want hot soup and you want, you know, kind of comfort and warm pillows and the mas essential massages. And, you know, it's all that that stuff, then it's going to move into Gemini, which is a way different energy than, than Taurus. So for one month, so roughly, so from May 8th until June 2nd, it's going to be in Gemini. And Gemini is all about flirting, flirting, flirting. Okay. Slide into your DM. It's all about social and it's like just really different energy. It's like very, um, where Taurus just kind of wants more one person and settle down and a little more grounded and rooted, that that Gemini Gemini energy wants to flirt and talk and network and go out on a date one night and then swipe left on Tinder and go out on a date on another night. I mean, it's just it's like that. And so, if you're looking to set up a dating profile, use this time to do that. Okay. Um, specifically before Mercury goes into retrograde. Uh, being Mer When Mercury goes retrograde, it's not a good thing. Um, okay, oh, Teresa said, you're a Taurus sun with a Gemini moon. Yeah, I actually, way, like a really long time ago back, um, right after I got out of high school, I, I dated a person that was a Taurus sun and Gemini moon. Um, and that is a different, that is a different combination. He was much more like talkative and chatty than a typical sort of Taurus. Um, and, uh, he, he was very flirtatious. We'll say that might've been the reason why we broke up because <laughs> he was so flirtatious. Um, it is very good for social media. So that's why I was saying, uh, if you guys want to set up an online dating profile, if you were thinking about doing it, now's the time. And especially before, we get into all of that stuff. Uh, John said, do I feel Gemini are gossips? Oh yeah. I know a lot of Geminis that are very sort of gossipy. Um, so it is a thing. <laughs> yes, it is a thing. So it was well, disseminating information. It's just constant blah, 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 blah. Gemini kind of tends to talk for talking. You know what I mean? Uh, I know Geminis that just will go on and on and on about stuff. And I'm like, wow, that was a lot that you just covered there, you know. Um, Angelina Jolie is a very famous Gemini. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll have to think about we'll get, getting our flirt on. And, and, and this is kind of... Gemini and Venus has a hard time settling down. It's one of the signs. I, I talk to you guys a lot about this, but it is one of the signs that tends to be the bachelor and the bachelorette. Venus and Gemini. Venus and Aquarius. Venus in Virgo, and I would definitely say honorable mention Venus in Sagittarius. Uh, those signs tend to be, have a hard time. And I'm just going to say this. I said this last year and I had a couple people texting me like, what the heck? Um, but it's because Gemini is the twins. That's two. It's duality. Sometimes Venus and, and Gemini people have a reputation for being cheaters. Because they can't make up their mind. They always want more than one. Uh, they like to have multiples. <laughs> or at least having a crush on one and then dating someone else and blah, blah, blah. So it does tend to be a thing where Venus and Gemini uh, people get in trouble a lot for, for that type of behavior. Or that type of... No, it's fine if you're polyamorous and everybody's agreeing and all that. But I'm talking about this is on the, on the DL, on the down low. <laughs> Um, Ashley, oh, Ashley and Holly both just said on, on Facebook here that they are Venus and Virgos. So 
Yep. Are you guys single? Um, because that is a thing for sure. Venus and Virgo tends to be single because picky. Picky, picky, picky. Uh, that tends to be a very, very one. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. John just said cancers tend to wander. Now, obviously, any sign can cheat, and it's, it, it is a thing. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things that, um, oh, gosh, and then Monica, Venus, and Virgo, all three of you are, are single. Um, <laughs> Oh, Ashley is not single. She said she has a Libra moon laugh out loud. So Ashley knows uh, Libra is all about partnership. Yes, for sure. Uh, but I bet you you are very talkative and communicative. I, I would be shocked if your love language wasn't words of affirmation. So so Venus is, is, when you have a Venus in Gemini, words of affirmation definitely would be a love language for you because that's talking. Um or writing, you know, having people write you texts or write you even letters and cards and all of that stuff. When you have Venus uh, going on there in, in Gemini, that is definitely wanting to express oneself with words, okay? So it can be endless talking also. <laughs> I'll just say that, but it's it's words. Uh, Fifi Wonder Girl said, yay, your 12th house Venus in Taurus Oh, and your return is May 6th. Oh, good. You have your Venus return. So that's like Venus on Venus. So remember, um, Fifi Wonder Girl, uh, that can be very good for your financial life as well. So I would, that would be a day. I like to gamble a little bit. I like my lottery tickets. So if you have a, if you like to do, uh, do lottery or it could be, it could be a fun thing with, um, you know, getting a job opportunity or some kind of thing. Juliet said Venus and Gemini. Yay, Juliet. So, but you have tons of planets in Taurus. Juliet's been married for a very long time, but she has tons of planets in Taurus. So, yeah, so, so there's that. So, um, yeah, and then that is it for the week. And I know that um, uh, usually we have a lot more going on and day by day by day. It's all this Venus stuff. It's Venus trying Pluto, Venus square. Uh, Jupiter and then Venus is moving into Gemini on Saturday so it's it's crazy um, how do you know the return dates for planets Ashley said so the return date obviously you have a solar return which happens every year and usually around that time you have a Mercury return because Mercury tends to hang out with the Sun in your chart uh, so that's kind of almost like a double return but it really depends on where the planets were at the time you were born so if for example if your Venus is in Gemini you know, Venus is going to return to that Gemini point. And you know how I'm always telling you the degrees and stuff, you'd need to know the degree, um, you know, uh, that it would be living in your chart. Yes, Juliet, married for 25 years, Venus and Gemini. It can be done. It can be done. You guys have a success story right here with Juliet, though she does uh, have a Taurus. She has a lot of Taurus in her chart, which makes her want to be grounded. So, so some of you have said, you know, you have a, um, you know, sun and Taurus, whatever, that'll make you more grounded. You have to think of these things as layers. Okay. Um, these are all layers of our, pers of our personality. And even though we might be like really, let's say rock solid in a, in a working atmosphere, in a love atmosphere, you could be different. And then in a, uh, playful, um, you know, entertainment atmosphere, you might be different versus a time when you're like playing sports or competitive. Like these are all how we act and behave differently. And a chart can explain all of those layers, which is really, really cool. And you have to kind of think about it in that way of like, these are all these layers. So how you act in one way is, is because maybe you have a sign that's kind of, I always talk about the departments. I talk about Mars, you know, is our action, our motivation, where are the moon? it's how we're feeling you know it's our feelings it's our emotions it's all sensitive and and caring um, and then we have Venus is how we love you know um, so so these are all departments <laughs> um, Ashley said how often the other planets well that is a whole study Ashley <laughs> They're all different. So like, let's say Saturn return is, is uh, 29 years, you know I mean? Uh, so we only go through a Saturn return three times in a lifetime if we're lucky, 29, 59, and 89. 
Um, and there are different dates and times and stuff that we kind of universally go through these returns. So it's fun studying the returns. And again, this is why I love teaching. And, and it is a lot of layers. It's a lifetime study, but it's it's rewarding because I, you know, it can kind of give us the heads up. There's probably been many times, if you guys have been watching this program, uh, there's probably been many times uh, where you've watched it and I said, oh, it's gonna be a crazy week. And then it turned out to be a crazy week. Well, normally you might've said, oh, I'm, I'm a failure. I'm not doing well, or I'm so stressed out or I'm so anxious. When you can say, oh, Gretchen said it was gonna be like this, you know? And, and it, it's like, oh, okay. There's a reason why everything's a little cray cray right now. It's okay. I'm fine. It's the planets that are doing this. So, so I feel like that's something that, um, that's why I try to do this so that it can help. I started doing this broadcast at the very, very, very beginning of COVID and the lockdowns and all that stuff. And I kept going because it, I got so many messages that it helps you guys, uh, to know about the layers and all the different, like things that are happening. And it's, com it is complex. It takes a very long time to learn astrology, but it's, I feel it's the study of time. It's the study of our solar system. That's going to take a really long time, but it's it's definitely worthwhile. And even to this day, I won't say I know every single thing. Even to this day, I still, um, it's infrequent. I'll just say it's more infrequent uh, that I learn something new, but I do. I do learn, and, and that's why I like it. I have a lot of, uh, a lot of good times with learning stuff. <laughs> Oh, you know a Venus in Gemini who only settled down for someone whose sun is conjunct moon. Yeah, that can happen for sure. Um, <laughs> oh, nice. You, uh, Monica com completed her archetypal pattern analysis work when the, her Saturn was re in return. Oh, John said it helps you. Well, that's great, John. Are you are you uh, Brother Light on Instagram? I'm wondering because there's some similarities there. Tara loves uh, the Monday night videos. Yes, Ashley loves the community here as well. Um, <laughs> Juliet has learned so much. What is a vertex? It is a past life marker. It's not a planet. Uh, Kirsten said, love Monday night sessions. Great. And uh, on Insta, yay. Uh, Jen is on Instagram. Fifi Wonder Girl put a bag of money on there. That's amazing. <laughs> So if you guys have questions for me, we're a little we're a little early tonight, but that's okay. We have uh, not every night has to be longer, um, but I will uh, definitely be drawing cards. Um, so remember, we want to communicate. Okay, we want to talk about our needs with our partner, with our lover, um, and also our heart chakra. This is Ven Venus. Uh, this is some rose quartz. It's a little hard to see on the camera here unfortunately, but this is, this is rose quartz. Okay. And, uh, I will say, um, uh, Gemini is the lungs. Okay. Gemini is hands, wrists. Okay. Elbows and the shoulder. All right. So when you think of Gemini, it's like the arms. Okay. And the hands and lungs. Okay. So we have Gemini, a little early Gemini season where Taurus is the throat. Okay, we're still in Taurus season. Taurus is the throat, it's the jaw, it's the lower, lower jaw, it's neck, it's the cervical spine, it's it's the throat, it's the, you know, the, what is that, upper trapezius here. It's all that stuff. So we're still, we're, we can't forget we're still in Taurus season. Um, but if you want to, if you're looking for love, if you're all looking for love, you want to, you want to get some good uh, rose quartz, okay, um, Definitely green and pink are the colors of the heart chakra. And so you want to think about how you want to love, how you want to be loved, all that stuff, okay, is good. So um, I haven't had any. <laughs> uh, Jane Moon Wolf said that she's learned, she's been studying astrology for 20 years and you still learn stuff from me. That's a big compliment, Jane Moon Wolf, because I think she's a great astrologer. So thank you. Thank you for that. That's amazing. Yes, I've been studying for a very long time. Ah, Kristen said she is thinking about quitting work and focus on what brings her joy. That's kind of not a question. Oh, it is. Is it time to get serious? There you go. Okay. All right, Kristen, let me pull a card for you. Um, I will be I will be pulling a card for Kristen and her work situation. 
what is the time is a good time for her to change um let's see here i got some allergies going on um what does kristen need to know kristen um you're getting the card of vision board okay which is vision the card of vision board these are archangel gabriel cards Create a board with images and words that inspire you, okay? Um, and then you have to be vulnerable. It's almost like the thing you want to do scares you, okay? Um, and learn to, to be vulnerable with your feelings as they contain wisdom and inspiration and then pray for the strength to focus on your priorities no matter what. It's I almost feel like, Kristen, um, you're like afraid to do it or that you're afraid to even almost like say it out loud, like that you're afraid to say out loud what it is you want to do. Um, it's almost like secretly in your head, like it's just one of those things, secretly in your head. Oh, okay. Are you going to move, Kirsten? Are you thinking about moving or maybe you're having to move uh, physical locations? But you're, I mean, you're getting all the cards here that you should do it, but you're afraid. Like there's like, it's like each, each deck that I'm pulling from is like, do it. And then, but you gotta, you gotta put yourself out there. You gotta get going. This literally is the card spiritual material conflict. Literally. Do you do what you love? Do you love what you do? And can you make money at what you love? I mean, not everybody is supposed to be, um, not everybody is supposed to do what they love for work. Okay. But this is saying you actually could. Um, but it does mean you would have to move. This is the card of moving, so it does mean you would have to move um, either either uh, physically move jobs or you would have to like physically move like out of your home or something. But there's some kind of a thing that you would have to do that. But it's like this desire. It's like deep, deep, deep. It's not even like, it's not saying you don't know what it is too. It's like I feel like you know what it is. It's just that you have to do it. You have to put yourself out there and do it. So... I'm seeing a lot more time of like kind of thinking, okay? But it's up to you that you could do it. It's free will, free choice. The cards are just showing right now of like thinking, 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 thinking. Like you're just, you have like analysis paralysis. It's almost like you have to kind of jump in and start doing it. I would do it on the weekends. I would do it on the evenings. I would do it at the times like when you're not doing your other work and just put yourself out there. I hope that helps, but I th I feel like it would be good for you. Um, I got something coming in October, but again, you guys, this is free will, free choice. You guys can decide a lot of your life, okay? Um, that's where I feel like sometimes intuitive work, it's almost like, how do I say this? Like law of attraction people are over here and intuitive work is over here. And people will come to me a lot of times and say, well, is that meant to be? Is that the thing that's meant to be? And I'm like, no, it's not, nothing's really, there's only like this much that's meant to be in our lives. And then other than that, it's free will, free choice. And we decide. So when I do readings for people, it's almost like if your life continues to go as it's going, this is going to happen. But you can change that. You know what I mean? Like I really do feel that we're not just puppets acting out or being like, in a play, um, I feel like we are able to decide that for ourselves. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, so yes, you do create your own destiny with your choices and your decisions and all of those things. Um, uh, and yeah, there are different things that I see coming, you know, and whatever. But um, like if I said to you, hey, uh, Kirsten, I saw you on TV. I see you with cameras. I see you I see you doing, kind of, well, you could just stop doing whatever it is you're doing and that won't happen, okay? You know, I mean, it's like that kind of a thing. So I hope that helps. Um, uh, but I think you you could do this. I feel like I, I get something in like October or November, but I feel like you could do this sooner if you want to. All right, so um, there's that. There's that, there's that, there's that. So I hope that that helps. Um... Uh, let's see. 
Stars 10 wants to have card pertaining to money. It sounds like we're doing money, a lot of money stuff tonight. Venus is money. Taurus is money. Taurus rules is the second house, rules over the second house of money. So we got to, we got to get some stacks, people. So stars, stars 10, I'm going to pull a card. There's a lot of fear around you right now. I almost get that there's like a lot of like uh, feeling of like almost like hopelessness around this or like like there's it's almost like crickets are chirping but I will tell you I do see money coming it's it was the fourth card I pulled stars 10 so that means literally that it's coming it's it's like crickets are chirping crickets are chirping crickets are chirping and then boom it comes in um, it's like you're literally alone. This is the hermit. This is the card of the loner, alone. And then all of a sudden you get awakening. Okay, that's that's the awakening card. You're waking up to something new. You get a new job offer. You get a new business idea, some kind of a thing. I don't know if I ever talked to you before, but I'm, I'm feeling like there's an entrepreneurial feeling around you or a 1099 or an independent contractor or some kind of a thing. And then boom, you get your money. But it takes a little bit. Um, crickets are chirping, okay, a little bit. So we want to put money in our in our in our life now. You know, you want to pull it in quickly because I do feel fear tends to push money away. Okay, scarcity tends to push money away. Where it's more, it's better. It's more beneficial and better to come. Okay, um, so I hope that that helps. So you guys are blowing me up now, um, and I have to wrap up my broadcast here. I'm trying to do this, but moving the camera so I can read some of these things. Um, yes, Kirsten said a bit of fear to allow yourself to do it. Um, I don't know, Stars 10, if you were still on, if you can uh, maybe uh, post or something, that would be awesome. Um, oh... Okay, Holly said you lost your mother a few years ago and you haven't had any signs of her presence or maybe you haven't noticed them. Hmm. Oh, good, Stars 10. I'm glad you I'm glad you heard the message. So, I hope that that helps. Did you understand the you got to you just got to get started. You got to like get out there and get started. You got to like there's a little bit of a um it feels like a blockage in front of you. Okay, so Holly Holly uh, lost her mom a few years ago. I'm trying to connect. Holly so that's um, when I connect, sometimes it doesn't make for good TV, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm uh, listening. So, okay, Holly, I want to, I want to connect with, uh, with your mom. The very first thing I saw was um, doves, like, like feathers. Um, white uh birds white doves or white feathers uh pure white like snow snow white um it's interesting i see them flying up so um i feel like i feel like she comes there's there's like doves or something around your mom she might be a bird person um that your mom comes in the form of symbols of a bird or of feathers um, she's very, um, she's very quiet. Your mother is very, uh, a quiet spirit, a quiet soul. So when I'm dipping into her, it's like very soft and gentle. I'm seeing like what these white doves, it's beautiful. And there's all this white light around her. She's a very soft, quiet, sensitive. I don't know if she was very religious in life, but she's surrounded by what feels like God and the angels, and it's it's lovely. I don't know necessarily that she would have spoken exactly to someone like me when she was alive. Holly, um, she's almost making me feel a little bit lightheaded right now. She's she's very sensitive. 
she's very sensitive she's very quiet and that's why you don't like there's some spirit i'll tell you i connect with them and they like pfft, they like blow me over because they're so um they're so uh like lively and they're so like in my face she is not she sits back and she's like she she's just quiet like i almost feel like i want to be like it's okay, dear. Like, that's kind of the way I want to talk when I'm, or, like, feeling her. And I have to say, I feel like she was either very religious or extremely spiritual because she, the way, all the symbology that she's giving me is, like, very divine feeling. Um, so I don't know if she went to church a lot or if she just prayed a lot, but I feel really like you're getting the cards of angel therapy and also sensitivity. I will say that around her death, I, there's a feeling of like she didn't want to inconvenience you. She didn't want to inconvenience other people. It was just kind of like, let me be like, like she didn't want to, she didn't, she felt bad. Like I almost feel like maybe you took care of her or that you helped her in some way, but it was almost like, you don't have to do that. You don't just worry about your, worry about your own life. I want you to have, because it's like, I almost feel like she always wanted you to think about yourself and not her. Like, it's like almost she felt like bad, like um, imposing, but she's fine now. I'm just telling you that that's literally the way that I felt about her. Um, but it's like, she was very, uh, sensitive, very sweet person. I really, I really, um, I have to say, like, I feel like she's just with the angels right now. I feel like there's other family members definitely around her. Um, but that there's like this, this white light feeling, um, you did. Oh, Holly. Um, so, oh, I didn't know you were talking here. Oh, brought eyes. It sounds like her. Yeah. Not religious, but it doesn't matter if she's religious or spiritual. Like I don't, I always say I'm not religious. Uh, I'm a minister and I still say I'm not religious. Um, but I'm a thousand percent spiritual. And I, I mean, I pray every day. I feel like your mom was like that too. Like, like she's, she, she has this connection. It's really quite lovely. Um, and I feel like she sends you feathers and, or that you will see doves. I keep hearing like, like that, like that little noise the doves make. So I'm, I'm feeling like, uh, when the doves come and sit beside your window, like, hello, that's her. But she, I can see why you would have trouble like kind of connecting with her or feeling connected just know she is a thousand percent around you um it's just that she's uh, a softer soul she's a gentler soul and it's like she doesn't want uh to uh sort of not bug you but like be invasive like she's just more more of a sensitive uh person um, she is seeing you through all of your life's journeys and all of your thing, but I feel like she wants you to focus on you, on your life and making sure that everything is okay with you. Um, so yeah, so I hope that that helps Holly. Uh, but she, she's, she is wonderful. Um, oh, okay. Uh, oh, she was a Sagittarius. You said, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, she's a quiet Sagittarius. Usually Sagittarius's are not that quiet. She's she gosh, she almost felt like a cancer or a Pisces to me. It'd be interesting to see what her moon or her rising sign was. Um, because she just was a more gentler person. Um, did she travel a lot, uh, Holly? Because that can be that's that can be birds and feathers and stuff too. And that's Sagittarius as well. Um, so I hope that that helps you guys. But I'm gonna call uh uh Oh, she said yes. Okay, great. All right, well, I, I hope that that helps. Um, but it's beautiful. Where she is right now is beautiful. It's almost like she's showing me, like, look, I'm crossed over. I'm in heaven or God's light. Like, I'm fine. It's it's beautiful here. It's wonderful. Like, she's fine. Like, I, I, feel, I feel like there's this big need that she wants to explain that. A lot of spirit doesn't always talk about that, but... Holly, I feel like for some reason, so I don't know if she was afraid to die or if there was some kind of a feeling there around, like, uh, I don't know. And then it's like, almost like she's like, no, it's great here. It's great. Like, don't worry. You know, I feel like it's, it's that sort of thing. 
I hope that helps everybody. So um, I am going to pull a card, one card, a collective card. What do we all need to know this week? What do we need to know? Um, what do we need to know about this Venus stuff, our love lives, our sens sensitivity, our romance department, our ability to make money? What do we need to know this week? Um, guardian angels, spirit guides, ancestors, what do we need to know this week uh, so that we can best navigate um, the week ahead? What's the best thing for us to know? Please help uh, to provide what is the best. Okay. Career transition. Okay, so a bunch of us out here might be looking at, looking at a different career um, or that you want to be following, maybe not even transitioning from your career, but you want to be following your life's purpose. So I'll read you the card. It's Archangel Chamuel. Your life purpose is triggering a blessed career change. Okay, so it's interesting. Kirsten and Stars 10 and a couple of others. Okay, we were talking about making money. Okay, but also I asked about what do we need to know about this Venus stuff in our love lives? Well, sometimes it's coming from another job. Okay, or another another career or doing something else. You know, uh, everybody has a, a career, like sort of a mission or, or uh, you know, sometimes we, we have uh, jobs and we have careers and we have missions. Uh, not everybody does their mission for, for a monetary gain. I'm lucky. I feel so blessed and fortunate, you guys, that I'm able to do this. Um, and then I'm able to share my mission with you guys because I, I love astrology. I'll always do astrology. <laughs> it's just that kind of thing. Um, so basically it's one of those deals that astrology, um, is my mission, but whatever your, whatever your blessed, um, career transition or not only, not only is it uh, a career, but it's, it can be, what is your life's purpose? Okay. So I want you guys to think about that because remember Venus can be monetary and sometimes we meet our love partner, even though some, jobs and corporations and different things have rules against it. Sometimes we meet love partners at work. It happens. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so, uh, that is the message for this week. Archangel Chamuel, you guys, I want you to remain grounded as much grounded as you possibly can. When we get into an air sign. Okay. We're still in Taurus season, but when we move into the air sign, it's like being tethered, uh, 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 being a balloon and it's not tethered. We tend to float up. So we want to get our feet on the ground. We want to do some earthing, walk barefoot on your grass or whatever, uh, get out into some sand, sandy beach or some kind of a situation where you can really ground yourself go to a garden center, go play in the dirt, okay? But continue to to really be grounded much more um, in this, uh, during this time, because we're going to need it, especially when, especially as we head towards that Mercury retrograde. So everybody, um, uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really love and appreciate all of you. It makes Monday nights feel awesome. I get to look forward to talking to you all. And um, yeah, so if you guys want, anybody wants a personalized astrological session with me, please feel free to send me a DM or a text message. Text message is the best way to get a hold of me, I'll just be honest. Um, it's, uh, but a DM works also. Um, and thank you for having patience with me. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get back to people, but I do love and care and appreciate all of you guys. So take care, have a great Monday night and the rest of your week, and I will talk to you soon.